want to start with this thought today. It's the power of choice. And it really started out of a scripture that I just was meditating on, meditating. And we've all meditated on this verse, but we're going to take a look at it real quick. It's Psalms 103, and we're going to start reading. Oh, well, I've got a couple of things. Can anybody lose weight in one day? Can anybody go from this? We would all like to. I know we would all like to in one day, wouldn't we? But we have choices that every day we make a choice, don't we? It is about the choices that you make and the situation. And it is about, you know, what you want your body to look like. This isn't about Weight Watchers, by the way, today. But it is about making choices. And every day that's a choice. You know, I think about, do I really want that piece of pecan pie? Yes, I do. Is there a whole pecan pie sitting on my counter right now? A whole one sitting there? Yes, there is a whole one. Well, you come over and help me, Marvin. Please put it away. I may just send it home with you. But I'm sitting there thinking about, I would sit down and I could eat that whole thing. I'd love to. But the choice of that, what did you say? I said, it's a God good. A God is so good. <laughs> oh, God is too good at Christmas time, right? But we do have choices. But this is the thing I kind of want us to think about. There are two primary choices in life, to accept conditions as they exist or accept the responsibility for changing them. And each and every one of us have got a mind to think with, don't we? Every one of us have a thought process that gives us choices that we make all during the day. And this scripture, and now I'll get to it. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his what? Benefits. Benefits. Who what? Forgives all your sins and what? Heals all your diseases. Who what? Redeems your life from the pit of crown and crowns you with love and compassion. Who what? Satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is what? Renewed, Renewed like the eagles. That scripture talked about forgiveness. Who forgives? I want you to think about all the things you've done this year that God has pardoned you for. I mean, when you think about the choices that you've made, have you made some bad ones this year that you thank God that he does already, he's already forgiven you for those decisions that you've made? Whether they be bad or good, right or wrong, he has already forgiven us. And the thing about that is his forgiveness has already restored us. I thought about the songs we sang today, and I thought about the fact all of those songs talk about his redemption of us, buying us back putting us back in a good place with him. Yes. So he does forgive us. You know what? I'm thankful that he heals us. In that forgiveness, he provides a reconstruction of who we were. He puts us back in the Garden of Eden. He puts us back in close communion with him. He restores all of that. All the bad things that the enemy is wanting to do and has done, he has restored all of that to us. He's healed us. You know, I'm thankful today that I'm well. You know, I didn't tell anybody because I just wanted it to be over. 20 years ago in November, my first opportunity with cancer came. 10 years almost to the day again. So November was a really bad month for me. I just wanted to get through November. And I just wanted to tell the devil every single day, no, you're not going to throw it on me one more time. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. And I'm, I'm just thankful that that physical healing is there. It's already been made manifest. I already received it. And I just told the devil, you know what? You are not coming back around. You're not knocking on this door anymore. But he's healed our diseases because we are mortal. But he is an eternal God. The nice thing about it is he's already taken care of all the physical healing I will ever need. Talks about protection from your enemies. I like that scripture in Psalms where it says, 10,000 can fall to my right, 1,000 can fall to my left, but nothing by any means shall harm me. Right. His protection. You know, I sat there and watched all this news and weather last night, and I thought, you know what? I started praying for all those people because I knew that God was going to protect me. You know, Mark and I were kind of talking about this. It kind of came up over your area and said it was coming right over downtown. And, and they said, you know, the, the sirens were going like crazy on and off for all of us that live down here. 
they kept blaring away and I kept thinking, you know what, God, I'm looking out this glass and I'm looking up and I see beyond those clouds, clear skies. And I just was thankful that, that, you know, we're all okay. We are all okay. Protection, protection. I like the fact that he says that he will crown us, crown us with great things, with righteousness. He's already made us his righteousness. When David wrote these few scriptures, I don't know if he really knew all the things he was packing into just a few verses. But this really has got the whole gospel in just a few little words here. The fact that promotion and recognition, he is our heavenly father, isn't he? You know, one of the greatest things that I know about my relationship with God is that there is nothing that will ever change it. I can't love God more and make him love me. And I can't love God less that it's going to make him love me any less. You know, that is seated on the inside of my head. And there is not one thing that ever moves me away from that. It's there. I can't help it. That's the way I believe about God. God's got that on the inside of me where I can't, I can't think about it. There is no choice to be made. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know it. People ask me all the time, well, aren't you afraid that if you died, there would be something you would have forgotten? I'm going, I don't have to worry about that because the God that I serve is eternal and his forgiveness for me is eternal. Yes. It's not conditional. You know, I grew up in a household where we were kind of judged by how good things were. How good you do this? How good you do that? How good you do this? When I left the Baptist church and went to ORU, my parents kind of wrote me off because that was like way out of bounds for them. You know, they watched Oral Roberts at 1030 every Sunday evening in Wichita Falls. He, was, he came on Sunday evening and I would sit there and watch and I'd watch the world action singers. I said, I would want to be one of those one day. And my parents would sit there and laugh about all the testimonies that he would bring up. So when I didn't go to Baylor or Hardin Simmons, and I went to ORU, my parents just kind of threw me out. But you know what? I don't have to worry about that with God. I don't have to worry about the fact that if I make a decision, he's going to throw me out. It's true. That's absolutely I don't have to worry about that, Marvin. I know that he's never going to do that. I know that. There is nobody that can take that away from me. That's as sure as my name is. I know that. We talk about financial provision. He has supplied all of my needs. How many of you believe the same thing? He supplies all of our needs, doesn't he? I think that provision is that he is the great I am. He said that I am always going to be enough. Always going to be enough. I like that. I like the fact that it says <laughs> our youthfulness and energy. You know, naturists will tell you that eagles will live in excess of 100 years. And every year they molt a few feathers. But when they turn almost 100 years, they molt completely. And they're totally renewed. And I thought about that. You know, God restores us a little bit day by day. But you know what? He constantly restores all of our energy to us. I'm thankful that at, at my age, somebody was talking, oh, I guess it was Mark. Mark and I were talking about birthdays. Mark had a birthday a few days ago, and uh, we were talking about how old he is. I said, he's not old. I'm older than he is. And he, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about health care, I guess, is what we were talking about. And uh, I told him he had only about 15 more months before, you know, you cross over that 65-year mark. And I'm sitting there going like, you know, I don't feel that old. I don't feel that old. When people talk about somebody being 65 years old, I think about somebody. <laughs> but I don't feel like that. I don't. And I don't think my body feels like that. My body may look like that, but I don't feel like that yet, which is all good. But I think it's interesting that it says he's restoring, restoring. And I think the more we ask, the more we're going to get. I want a more youthful life. You know, I don't know that I want to live to be 100, but it sounds like the way they're going with drugs, we're all going to live there. 
And what's the guy, I can't remember the guy's name that was on Johnny Carson's show long before Johnny died. He had this guy on, he was 105 years old, and the question to him was, what would you have done differently if you knew that you were gonna live 105 years old? He said, I would have treated myself a whole lot better. <laughs> Taking care of myself a whole lot better. So I think it's all up to us to do that. But t take a look here at 2 Corinthians. This is not that we are sufficient. You know, I can't do this. Or in my own competency, I can't do what God has done for me. Or of think of ourselves to think anything that is of ourselves. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency, our competency comes from God. Everything we have comes from God. Nothing in that scripture that we just read can I do on my own? None of it. Look at this one. Because I do all things through what? Christ, who strengthens me. Now, we know that. Everybody here in this room, we know that. We know that. And a lot of us have made a choice that, you know, I would say all of us in this room have made that choice that this is the way we're going. This is what we believe, and I'm going to go with it. But you know what? There's a whole lot of people out there that don't even have a clue about the fact that God wants them to prosper. They don't have a clue that God wants them well. Their clue is that God is like with a big stick wanting to beat over their head because of who they are and what they've done in the life that they lived. And you know what? That is so far removed from the, from the God that I know. So far, so far removed. You know, last week I went to, a uh, well, week before last, uh, I took last Sunday off, as most everybody knows, and I went to Universal Studios. And I was only going to take a day. It was only going to take a day. So I decided to buy one of those little express passes. If you've ever gone, that express pass gets you to the front of the line. So you don't have to wait in all these long lines. Because my thought was, I'm only going to be there for a day. The rides that I want to ride, I don't want to wait would wait and wait and wait. I'm going to buy the extra thing. It's like buying the ticket again. It's stupid. But you get in line and you just say, I've got an express pass. And they say, oh, go over here. And you just walk right up to the front of the line and you get in. I thought, man, that is really pretty cool. But I thought about all the people that didn't have that. You know, I thought about the price of that pass and my thought was, how many rides am I going to use? How much is it going to make each one of those rides cost? You know, by the time you windle it all down, because you're not going to ride everything. But I thought about how many shows and all that stuff that I saw. And I thought, is it going to really be worth it? And I thought, you know what? I'm only going to do this once. I thought, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. How many of you have ever been to Universal Studios? Anybody here? The one in Florida? Did you go to the new Hogwarts? Take the Hogwarts Express over to Harry Potter? Okay. Well, they've got this train. You get on this train and you ride over to the Hogwarts area, Harry Potter, because they've got all these new rides over there. Well, I was just so excited about this pass, going to get on this train. We got on that train, went on the other side. All these people got on the train. We all enjoyed it. It was really very neat. I mean, this, you know, this, whole, this whole thing is just so cool. Went up to the ride, going to ride, showed my pass. What line do I get in? Oh, that doesn't work over here. <laughs> what? Oh, no. That doesn't work on this side of the park. I said, why didn't they tell us that? Why didn't they tell me that when I bought that pass? They said, oh, if you'll turn the express ticket over, you'll see it's like one point, Keith. Barely big enough to even see the little indentions on where the print is there, but it says exclusions, everything in Hogwarts. And I'm going like, you've got to be kidding. And I thought about those long lines. And I thought about that express pass, how well, how well that worked over here and how all the people that didn't have it didn't have that opportunity. And I thought about, you know, how many of us in life have an express pass? You know what? I think about the fact that I live a fairly stress-free life. I don't have to wait on anything. God supplies all my needs. I sit there and I, and I think about how wonderful it is to be able to, to be accepted right 
to him and not have to wait, not have to think about, do I have to go through somebody else or I've got to ask a priest to pray for me so I make sure that I get my prayers? Do, what do I have to do? How much do I have to do to get God to get on my good side? And I don't. And I thought about the price that I paid for that express pass. And I think about the price that he paid this morning when we talked about crucified. I think about the price that he paid so that I don't have to wait in line. I don't have to, I don't have to be stressed. I don't have to about worry about whether or not God's going to take care of me or not. I don't have to worry about if God wants me well or not. I don't have to worry about the fact, does, does God want me close to Him? Does He hold me close? I've got an express pass that He paid for, a dear price. But I think about all the people that don't know that. That don't know that. We're in the same park. We're in the same world together. But you know what? They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. They think they have to do all this stuff to get to do the same things. They don't. They don't. So here's a thought. Any act of obedience shortens the distance to any miracle you're pursuing. I think when, when God asks us to do something, whether it be hard or simple. I think when we do that, when he asks, when he calls, when he puts that little nudge in your heart and he says, this is something I really want you to do. And you know it, you know, because you can't get away from it. It's there over here. It's over here. Every time God tells you to do something, there's no getting away from it. Because I believe that we all are looking to please God. I think every day we don't wake up saying, well, how can I make God's life miserable? I think we wake up in the morning saying, you know, how, what, you know, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and, re you know, be glad in it. What can I do for you today, God? What would you have me to do? How can I serve you better? I think that shortens the distance, cuts out the line, cuts out all the stress. You know, God's not a harsh dictator. He's not somebody with that big stick. But how can you get that across to people unless you share that with them? How can you tell them, you know what, God loves you in a way that's beyond your imagination? His love, His compassion, all the things that we sang about today are so important. Look at this verse here. Jeremiah 29, first off, this is, this is what I want you to think about this year. Your number one goal before now and January 1. And this is what I would tell the world. If I could tell the world something, this would be what I would tell them. Reconstruct a more accurate picture of God and what he wants for you and your future. Get a better picture. Stop for a moment and write down what you think God wants for you. Write it down. What does he want for your health? What does he want for your finances? What does he want for your relationships? What does he want for the things that you do in the world, your business life? What does he want for all of that? I would get a better picture of that. I would reconstruct that. And I would tell the world, this is something you need to think about doing. You need to get a picture of what God really wants for you. If I could tell the world, that's what I would tell them. This is what I would tell them. I'd say, get a better picture of God. Not the God that you grew up with in the, this church or that church, but get a better picture of what God says about who he is from his own word. Because this one I love right here. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. If the world knew that, if they got a better picture of that one verse, you know what? I think there'd be a whole lot of people turning around thinking differently about God. These aren't words that somebody put into God's mouth. This is from his very mouth. You know, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans, and I love this one. Jeremiah had it. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness I have drawn you. Can you imagine if the world 
had a good understanding of those two scriptures, if they could just sit down and say, you know what, man, I need to, I need to get some things straightened out. I need to think about God differently. I need to reconstruct the way I think about God. God wants me well. That scripture in, in, in Psalms, all of that, my finances, my health, my provision, he has crowned me. All of those things, that's what he wants. Not just for us because we're here, but he wants it for everybody out there who doesn't even know it yet. It's already been done for them. They just don't know it. They already have an express pass and they choose to wait in line. They choose to wait in line. I think that would be so stupid. But it, because you have to learn it. You have to decide you want that. So here's a thought right here. We must be willing to get rid of the life we've planned so that we can have the life that is waiting for us. I thought when I wrote that, I was sitting there thinking about all the things that, you know, we sit down and plan. You know, we, we make plans, certain things that we're going to do in a year, we want to do. And then I decide, you know what, I'm going to take the limits off of God and decide that God can do whatever he wants to do no matter where I'm at. And I believe this next year is going to be a very prosperous route. Not year for me, but one for all of us. Because I think that's what God has planned for us. I think God has got nothing but good things in store for us. Great things. I had a dream about television equipment. I don't want any. But I had this great big dream about television equipment. I don't want it. I told God, that dream was for somebody else. <laughs> I'm sitting there going like, you know, I know that God has got great things, great things for us. But you've got to decide, I don't want what I see. I don't want what I've planned. I want what God has planned. I want what he has planned. Uh, I asked Marvin this morning, how many of you saw the picture of the natural? It was with Robert Redford. It's an old movie. I think it was like 1998, something like that. Old movie. And some of you aren't that old. Old movies, old movies. But it had a star cast. I mean, when you think about it, Robert Redford, Robert Duvall, Kim Basinger, Glenn Close, and Barbara Hershey. I mean, that's all. and that's just some of them. I mean, this was one of those jam-packed kind of movies with all of the stars wanting to be in on this picture. And it's actually a true story. A true story about a baseball player that came into his own later in life, much later, and no one had ever discovered him. He was a great hitter. I mean, he hit everything that just was out of the ballpark. And he could pitch. This guy could just simply do no wrong. The problem was he made some bad choices. Uh, he's in the hospital, the scene that I'm going to tell you about. He's in the hospital, and he's sick. He's discouraged. He's about to give up in life because he was poisoned by a woman who he thought loved him. And this poison has put him in the hospital. And the doctor has just come to tell him, You'll never play again. You'll never play baseball again. And he's devastated. Hi, and thank you for watching today's service. As I spoke to you at the beginning, we have a couple of outreaches which I think are important for you to know that we're participating in, and you might want to join us. We've got one, which is our orphanage in Uganda. It's 320 children, about, that have been left there because their parents have either died or are affected by HIV AIDS. There are no relatives that will take them in because it's such a stigma to have HIV or even to be gay there in Uganda. We also have a church in Tegucigalba, Honduras. It's just a starting work, but there is a lot that we can do to help them. And if you'd like to join and be a part of that, we invite you to go to our webpage, www.crossroadscommunitychurch.us, and you'll see a tab there that says donation. You can make your donation through PayPal. It's secure and we'll get that and we'll send it on to them. 
So if you'd like to participate, we thank you for doing it in advance because we know that God is going to bless you. Thank you for watching today and tune in next week.